Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Some progress has been made in a standoff between the telecoms industry and government regarding high demand spectrum needed for the provision of services. Natasha Wendell tells us more. Hi Natasha. Hi. What is the background to the disagreement between the industry and government? Well the impasse actually goes back many many years. Um, back when industry was demanding access to high demand spectrum, um, that's the 700, 800 and 2.5 um, bands that are needed for new technologies. I mean, as demand for data increasingly grows, the telcos need to roll out their new technologies, get, get everybody online. At the moment, they're struggling with that. And therefore, this is where the spectrum comes in. It will enable them to offer more services, free up some of the spectrum that they really do have, and get all their, their high tech onto the 7, 800 and 2.5 bands. Um, but the problem is now that the, <laughs> the Department of Telecommunications, or the Department of Communications at that stage, they wanted to ensure that the spectrum is used to at least open the market to smaller players as well, um, because at the moment it's currently dominated um, by just a handful of mobile operators. So the idea was to try and spread, spread around the love, if you want to call it that, with the spectrum. Open up the markets, get the marginalized groups in, get the SMMEs in, um, get them involved as well. It gives them a platform to launch their own products. And in line with that, they've been trying to work on a spectrum policy, which has been going back and forth for well, nearly a decade now. This impasse, though, was almost broken, I think, last year, when Icasa decided, well, enough's enough, and they actually put out an invitation for an auction for the spectrum. The Department of Telecommunications, though, had other ideas. They blocked it legally, and that still actually had an impasse now. But with their new ICT policy paper out, they're actually trying to hope to resolve some of the issues why, why they're blocking the actual auction itself. What assurances has the Telecommunications Minister given the telecommunications operators? Well, look, with the, with the new ICT policy, um, it actually raised a lot of red flags uh, for a lot of the companies out there. While in most it was accepted as a good enough policy for them, the one thing that was an issue was that when the government launched their own um, wireless open access network, that they would take away all the spectrum, the high demand spectrum, that the telcos have actually been fighting for. Um, it's, there's been a lot of engagement back and forth um, since the launch of this, well, since the release of this policy about the spectrum in particular. Now, after all of these engagements, the telco minister and industry have finally actually come to uh, an agreement as such. The telcos don't necessarily have to return all of their spectrum right away that they've, they've really licensed for. Um, but the way that they're working it out now is that the telcos can keep the spectrum until their license expires, which is 20, 28, 29. It depends on the company. And once you know that the government has launched their wireless um, open access network, then the telcos need to buy in to 30% of that network. Well, th those will be the initial stages. And it seems that the industry seems to be quite happy with that. Um, there's also going to be talk of how much spectrum is going to be needed for 4G. Um, the department's actually got ICASA now looking at or about to start an inquiry into that to decide how much spectrum will be allocated to the 4G networks and so on and so forth and what will be left over. And anything that is actually left over will be used for rural rollout, if you want to call it that. And in that case, the, um, the telcos will actually have to buy in for 50% of the actual wireless open access network. There are also plans to hold a market inquiry into data costs in South Africa. What can you tell us about that? Right, well, the cost to communicate has been a big issue for a while now. I mean, you can see with the data must fall movements that are happening in the background. Now, many departments, government departments, are actually starting to take notice and saying, OK, now is actually the time. We need to do something about this before it gets out of hand. And in line with that now, they've actually decided, because the traditional routes they've been taking have netted them nowhere. They have not been able to drop the, the cost to communicate. Um, so now they're looking at other avenues of trying to get this movement going. 
because um, the well, the final aim is actually to get the cost to communicate under two percent of domestic in income of an individual's income. At the moment, I think it's sitting at about four point six percent, and a lot of South Africa's poor actually can't afford data as it stands. So the idea is, and the threat is from many departments, so from the Department of Communications, from the Department of Economic Development, and obviously the Department of Telecommunications, is that they'll go to the Competition Commission if they have to. Before all of this occurred, um, the Department of Tele Telecommunications actually approached Tecasa to do a market inquiry. But the problem with that is that market inquiry is going to take another two to three years to complete. But one of the initial findings were that it's because there's a lack of competition in the industry, and that is actually what's the pro what one of the problems are at the moment, and hence the wanting to approach the Competition Commission. So the Department of Telecommunications, the Department of Communications, and the Department of Economic Development, as I mentioned earlier, are now going to look at ways of, of getting enticing the Competition Commission to do their own market inquiry see where the problems are if it is actually a competition problem and then move forward from there and see what happens. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.